So The Social Network, it's a film directed by David Fincher. It's written by Aaron Zorkin, based on a book called The Accidental Billionaire by Ben Masaryk. And it's a film that chronicles a young Harvard undergrad named Mark Zuckerberg and how he, within just a few short years from 2003 to present, has gone from a guy programming on his computer in his dorm room to being the world's youngest billionaire, valued at $8 billion now, it might be higher. Sound on this film is critical because of the dialogue, because there's so much dialogue that happens in such a short amount of time, and a lot of overlapping dialogue as well. I think the most important part was making sure that we really could get every word to be very clearly understood. What Fincher's trying to do is create something that's, in his mind, uh, sort of a docudrama, so as accurately as possible portray everything as being as real as possible. Mark Zuckerberg, as, as he's designing the website, life around is going. Fincher always wanted, I need sounds outside. You know, there's a whole world going on that doesn't give a crap about what he's doing until now. We wanted to create the backgrounds that were accurate to that period in time in Boston, for example, so we sent one of our recordists out to Boston record. We also went to the Stanford campus in Palo Alto to get those noises and put them in the film. And then for the Facebook offices, we went to a lot of Bay Area, Silicon Valley companies and set up microphones and hid them and recorded those ambiences uh, for the film. And you can hear that in the film as well. There's a sequence that you'll see, which is the Ruby Sky sequence. Mark Zuckerberg moves out to California and he meets Sean Parker, who is the founder of Napster. And Sean sort of is the the devil in this film, and he's the one that lures Mark Zuckerberg to his camp. And the scene takes place at a club called Ruby Sky, which is a real club in San Francisco. And what David wanted was to have this, in essence, a business meeting happening in the loudest possible environment with the loudest pounding music with all the subwoofers firing and all the distortion of all the speakers firing. And yet it's a very, very important business meeting. And he had his actors shouting at each other as if, you know, we're in a club, the music's pounding, and you're trying to talk, and Mark is completely out of his element. Where Sean Parker's in his element, he's working it. And what David wanted to achieve was that feeling of being Mark Zuckerberg, completely overwhelmed. He's never been to a club before. He's never seen these scantily clad women. And at the same time, he's being kind of told and, you know, in, in sort of being felt out by Sean Parker. It was very challenging for us to mix it because every word that's being said has to be understood. But Fincher wanted it to be as noisy as possible. And every time we mixed it, it was blisteringly loud, ear bleedingly loud. And then Fincher would walk in and go, nope, not loud enough. David Fincher is very involved in the mix, but at the same time, he's very trusting of our team. His technique is to sort of let us explore the soundtrack of, and, and the shape and sculpt the sound, and then comes in and sort of reels us in on things that he doesn't think are working. But he's very involved and knows exactly what he wants and very specifically requests things, and with the music as well, very hands-on. This film, when you watch it, it's one of those films where you might go, well, there isn't any sound in this film. And yet there is a lot of sound, and it just doesn't feel like there is because it's not a loud action film, there's not loud car crashes or gun fighting sequences. There's a lot of jump cuts in the film where we go from one place to another place and it goes back and forth in time a lot. And so sound is important just in establishing that we're in a new place. We'll oftentimes go from one deposition room to another deposition room and the cutting is so quick that if the sound wasn't there to create a vertical edge to say, okay, new location, okay, new location the audience would be confused. So just sound helping provide the changes and shifts in backgrounds, letting the audience know where they are in time. We mixed the music for Trent and Atticus into the film, and it was really a lot of fun. They provided us with all these tracks to, to mix in, not just a fully mixed piece of music, but we have the drums separate from the bass, from the keyboards, from the percussion, from the synthesizers, the guitars, everything separate. So that allowed us a lot of flexibility to, to pan all the music in and around the speakers. And there's a scene 
in one of the reels where uh, a girlfriend lights something on fire and we had fun panning just the hi-hats into the surrounds. And so the music had a lot of interesting shape to it. When David first started thinking about this film, he was very excited about the notion of an electronic music score. The sense of synthesizers and computer technology and that sort of notion of circuitry and things being built were things that I think Fincher was excited about and, and that's why he approached Trent Reznor for, for writing the music. And I think that the score and the electronic sort of sequency part of it is the, is the voice that adds to the sort of the building of what Facebook is. I've watched it a lot of times, as you can imagine, and I still find new things. And when we're mixing the film, we're still trying to place little tiny little beautiful bits of sound in there to help support that image. And this film is so gratifying on so many different levels that we just enjoy working on it all day long.